Hello there, yes. Well, we'll see if we get a bit more of that thunder today. Pussycat was rather intrigued to be indoors yesterday, very sensibly. Yes, anyway, uh, today I just wanted to have a look at a couple of videos with your friend and your friend, not mine, uh, Peter Whittle and Ray from New Culture Forum, who were on a lot on Talk TV yesterday. And I just want to sort of highlight um, the kind of weird world that they live in and their use of that kind of 55 Tupton Street um, uh, 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 sphere. Uh, think tanker sphere? Something like that. Anyway, let's dive in. Yes, well, first up we've got uh, Vanessa Feltz's uh, TV show. I'm presuming it's a kind of mid-morning thing. Uh, Vanessa Feltz is perhaps a working definition of uh, this particular type of show. So I don't think we're going to get any particular journalistic insights from her. Anyway, she's got a high on Peter Whittle next to her. And let's see what we're going to be talking about this morning. Welcome back. Some Church of England school pupils are being taught that they benefit from white privilege. Teaching guidance issued by the diocese, which oversees 87 schools, states that pupils should learn that white privilege means that they are the dominant representation in all media. With me in the studio is the director of the New Culture Forum, Peter Whittle. Hello, Peter. Hi, and joining us down the line is Nels Abbey, broadcaster and the author of Think Like a White Man. Hi, Nels. Good to see you on the programme. Maybe. Right. Uh, just to dive in there. Um, uh, her initial statement about white people being the dominant uh, group represented in media, I, th I think you'd find it really hard to um, disagree with that. They simply are because they're the dominant group in society. And by dominant, I mean total numbers. I'm not using that as a power one, but we will come on to power. Um, yes, anyway, um, I did a video a few days ago uh, sort of debunking this notion of what is taught two pupils uh daytime tv nighttime tv tv news generally can't get its head around the notion of teaching something isn't the same as teaching something they are two distinct things i can teach children about nazi germany i'm not teaching them to be nazis the two things are separated anyway yes let's dive in a bit further Maybe I'll start Thank with you. you. Do you think it's important, Nels, that pupils should be taught about white privilege? And if you do, maybe you'll tell me what white privilege is, just in case people don't know. Yeah, I think it's absolutely essential that uh, people, young people in our society, have an understanding, a grounding of our society as it actually is. So in a, a critical part of understanding our society is understanding the concept of white privilege. And white privilege um, simply means that you... It's sim well, privilege simply means a lack of obstacles. Um, and white privilege in this context simply means that you that you don't face obstacles by virtue of the fact that you are white. It doesn't mean that life might be won't be simple or life won't be hard or you won't face obstacles, but it just means that those obstacles won't be related to your ethnic or racial background. And what seems quite interesting is that you can really sum that up in a sentence or less. So do you think it's really essential to teach it or can't they just be told once or, you know, said, you know, to bear in mind that if you're white, you won't have the same obstacles as somebody who's black. You might have others, but you won't have the same. End of. Is there any more to teach? Do you need lesson after lesson on that on that same theme? Right. OK. And again, I uh, don't really understand what teaching is. Um, uh, if you think about the... Uh, PSHE, PHSE, whatever it's called these days, curriculum. Um, you can say to kids, if you like, um, uh, don't take drugs, don't overeat, uh, don't drink too much uh, when it's legal, uh, have sex responsibly, and take some exercise. You could say all those things in just like, well, as short time as I did. However, that's not really the way that we sort of give messages to children and you may notice here that the guy all the guy is saying is that if a notion of white privilege is just that that if you are white in society you will not face the same type of attitudes from the dominant majority as you would do if you were black and you can apply the same thing to um, notions around class if you like um uh, a hooded kid at a shopping mall will have a very, very different experience of shopping mall security to someone like me wearing a suit. You know, that's simply the way the world is. 
Again, I don't think you can argue with that. However, we know that Peter will. Oh, I think how so it's it's like it's it's easy to 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 define oxygen or so, but it takes a little bit more, a little bit, a few lessons to properly make sure somebody understands the impact and the role of oxygen within our society. It's the same thing about white privilege too. That it's it, I can make a roll off the tongue, but at the same time too, you have to go into a bit more depth of understanding, so particularly for younger people, so they know what they're seeing. And I think the objective here for all of us, particularly as far as the Church of England, who, the Church of England, I must point out, really does owe uh, black people both presently and historically. But, um, but, but I think the key thing here is that it's important for us as a society that we are teaching our young people and making our society as compassionate and as cutting edge as possible. And I think in teaching this concept, as well as teaching other things such as financial responsibility... Nels, or, I've got to stop uh, you, before you before you go off into the realms of financial responsibility, which is a totally different programme, we're not talking about it, and we're very low on time. So let me talk to Peter yep. Whittle about this. Nels says it makes perfect sense. Do explain to young people what white privilege is and that they may or may not be benefiting from it. But that's not really the point, and, and my friend here is, not, is being disingenuous. White privilege is the idea that by virtue of being white, you have innate privilege. So if you take this country at the moment, the most underprivileged people in terms of education, and we're talking about schools, are indeed white working class boys. They are the ones that do the worst at school, and they're the ones who are least likely to go to university. It's based, or it comes out of, something called critical race theory, which is being pushed in our schools now. There's a very good report just come out today uh, by Don't Divide Us all about this. It's not just the Church of England. And it basically says there is inherent white privilege, Britain is structurally racist, its history is racist, and just one story, long story of oppression, all of which I reject. This should not be taught as though it is somehow fact and that is what is happening increasingly in our school well let's just check with nels i'm imagining nels thinks that is fact do you nels of course it's inherently fact absolutely um it's, uh, it's inherently fact it, it's demonstrable it's demonstrably fact i don't think that that's um a, no credible body okay yeah just to dive in there because we will leap on ahead from this um what peter does here is he just hasn't bothered to listen to what the bloke has said and has just come out with the standard kind of libertarian 55 Tufton Street line, which is, oh, um, this isn't real, despite the fact that I think we can agree that it is real. And anyway, it's a sinister communist plot. Yeah. And again, he uh, he quotes a report, which uh, I spent uh, a little bit of time two days ago debunking okay don't divide us aren't a grassroots organization in any way shape or form but are very 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 closely relinked to uh groups in 55 tufton street and indeed to gb news for example what peter is saying here is oh you know we must con must be concerned with the white working class Peter doesn't care about the white working class, and if he knew anything about education, um, we could have a long discussion, which he, I won't have with anyone who's learned it, and you can see how angry he gets about with this guy, who obviously knows what he's talking about, because he actually works with the white working class, which is something, of course, Peter doesn't do. What Peter does is tip the white working class. That's what they're there for, for Peter. But anyway, leaving that aside, he gets angry about this, because... In his world, he uses race as a means of furthering a particular political agenda. That's all he's interested in. That's where his money comes from, on a really blunt level. And, you know, I can give you reams of statistics about which particular class groupings and ethnic groupings in the UK do worse in education. And, drumroll, it isn't particularly the white working class. It's Roma kids. All right, across the board, it's Roma kids. There we go. And in various places in the UK, it's black, um, it's uh, Bangladeshi males. All right. And you can like, you know, the example of, that was used a couple of days ago was about uh, Haringey. Well, in Haringey, black working class kids do worse than white working class kids. But that doesn't fit in that reality. That nasty reality doesn't fit in with what Peter wants. Yes, and uh, having been told uh, <laughs> uh, by somebody uh, about the work they do with white working class kids, uh, uh, Peter just poo-poos the whole notion because, of course, he has to know better because he's Peter. 
I'm not going to bring the issue of race into that, but it's essentially there. Um, let's move on and see what Peter has directly to say about this. Let me ask Peter, do you, think, do you think it does any harm to yes, teach children about it white privilege? absolutely does. Why? Because if you tell people, uh, if you tell white kids, oh, you are inherently privileged, you're inherently racist, actually, and if you say you're not racist, that's also proof that you actually are, right, because you have unconscious bias. You know, all of these things are terrible and confusing for young people. What I would say as well, Vanessa, is that, you know, this is all being put forward as though it's some kind of very nice, you know, sort of full of good intentions. It really is not. We end up in a situation like we've had reported this weekend where basically uh, black kids in a school in London are being given extra literacy classes and white kids are not allowed to attend them. Now, that is, well, I think that's racist. And also, for that matter, I think it might even actually be illegal. All but that's right, we'll, a logical we'll stop it conclusion. there, Nels. Peter, thank you very much. OK, yeah, just to dive in there. Apologies for that bit at the end. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> again, Peter brings up this report. All the report is all over the press, so it must be true. No, it isn't. Uh, that thing about Haringey. Yeah? And, you know, you can see this guy is actually angry because so he lives in a world where his worldview is essentially set by the people around him. And when we come on to the next video, I can, you know, sort of very much show this thing as well. But you notice, I mean, his, his response to this is authoritarianism. Yeah. If Peter gets his way, none of these concepts in inverted commas will be taught in schools. OK, great. So we'll just get rid of critical thinking in school, shall we? And yet Peter and, and the rest of the 55 Tufton Street crew are the first people to jump up and down and scream about young people being indoctrinated. But, of course, it's OK, provided they're indoctrinated in the right way. And that's what he means. Yes, right. Anyway, next we come on to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. Uh, Mike Graham uh, has a background in football journalism. So, of course, he is the archetypal bloke in Weatherspoons, uh, <laughs> sort of mid-morning uh, uh, after actual news that you get. Um, yeah, uh, Mike Graham, independent. Nope, he works for Rupert Murdoch. Republic, he has no concept about the, what the word means. So let's see him and Rafe in action. Welcome back to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. We're talking to Rafe Hadel Manku, historian, broadcaster and senior fellow at the New Culture Forum. Uh, we had some movement yesterday on the migrant bill, Rafe. It looks as though uh, the House of Commons was able to sort of do away with quite, quite a few of the House of Lords amendments that were brought in uh, famously the other week uh, when uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury was sort of leading the way for the wokists. Um, they're also talking about bringing in age tests for migrants as well, which has got to be a step in the right direction. Yes, well, I mean... OK, just to leap in there. Uh, yes, OK, setting this one up. Um, yeah, uh, Mike doesn't understand the way the House of Lords works. Rafe doesn't understand the way the House of Lords work. Why on earth are we accepting these morons on our television? And the answer is, it doesn't really matter because they're not interested in the way the world works. They want the world to operate on their level. And uh, just to put, put, put this forward, you cannot age test somebody. There is no mechanism in a biological sense that you can do that but that's not really what they're interested in. Anyway, we'll need to leap on a couple of times here. OK, just to leap on a bit, let's hear from Rafe, man of the people. But a particular plague on the House of Lords, you know, for deliberately trying to, to scuttle this bill and, or kick it into the long grass. And it just shows how out of touch they are with the British public and how little they understand the consequences of this. I happen to be going for... OK, just leap in there. Yeah. Um, yes, again, Rafe doesn't understand what the House of Lords is there. Uh, the House of Lords is there to make sure that rubbish bills from the House of Commons... Uh, are kicked into the long grass because they're rubbish bills. That's what they've been doing. You might not, um, you can disagree with uh, their interpretation of it all you want, but that's their job, and they that's what they've done. And <laughs> and, 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 and you know he's gonna he's he's gonna bring up the real world implications of this. Rafe, mate, 
let's have a look at your backgrounds, shall we? In terms of your real world ism here, and let's <laughs> this this bit really amuses me. Let's let's hear what he's got to say about. The real world. Come on. Um, unexpectedly, I was in Great Yarmouth on, uh, last weekend, and I, everywhere I went, I, I could see evidence of the impact that illegal migration is having on this country mm. by the people that are around. And of course, the peers. Right. I wonder what he means by that. Um, could it be that he means people that look like him but don't wear a bow tie? I think he does. Never ever go to these places. They live lives of, uh, of you know, cocooned away from all yes. of this. And it's just like the just like the Church of England, you know, these institutions have been captured by woke ideology. Yeah. They, the buildings may look the same; they may be wearing robes, but they're completely different institutions yeah. how they were just twenty years ago. Right. Okay. And again, yes, it's really, really bad that these people live in these kind of little bubbles. Says Rafe again. Have a look at the background there. Talking to Mike Graham, a man who um, I don't know. Uh, seems to think that Bexhill on Sea is a, a form of reality, but leaving that aside, it really is quite astounding that Rafe is chastising people in the House of Lords for being out of touch with ordinary people. Anyway, just to leap on very slightly. You know, Theresa May is, has, is famous for having this hostile environment policy. Well, of course, now we know that hostile environment policy was actually very weak. If you really want to make uh, this country unattractive. You just have to make it less in inviting than France. Mm. You've got to halve the benefits people receive when they get here. You have to confiscate any assets that they have over a certain amount, as they do in, in Denmark. And you have to crack down on the black market economy of this country, because unlike France, which is very tough on immigrants who are uh, uh, tough on businesses that hire illegal immigrants, in this country they know that they can disappear so easily into the curry houses and the restaurants of this country, and landlords don't do checks on people who are renting from them. If we actually got really serious about this, we would tackle those two issues, as they do in France, yeah. and we would immediately see a big drop in numbers coming over here. Okay, uh, just to uh, inject a dose of reality into the real world that Rafe and uh, uh, <laughs> Talk TV are talking about here. Okay, then. Um, uh, we need to reduce the level of benefits people get here that are coming here illegally. He means people on small boats. Uh, people here are coming here on small boats, claiming assigning, don't get any benefits. So I'm not really quite sure how we'd halve that. Um... I don't know. Uh, I personally wouldn't mind if I had nothing having it halved. I don't think it would really bother me. And, you know, you'd notice, the, notice about what he says, right? OK, you know, these people can just disappear into curry houses. Um, when was the last time you were served in a curry house by somebody who probably came off a boat? It isn't a thing, is he? He means brown people generally, because, again, despite his protestations, he and Mike don't live in the real world. It's this little bubble, and I don't know. The irony-free zone that we see here is really quite, quite something else. Yes, well, there's nothing I like better than seeing two blokes like that, three blokes like that, telling me about the working class. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Tell me more about your worldview. Anyway, <laughs> do have a lovely day. Jeez, I don't know. I don't know. These people get so much airtime and it's... Oh, it's astounding. It is just always astounds me. I shouldn't be astounded because that's the way that power and privilege and money and capitalism works. But it still does. Anyway, have a lovely day.